Okay, for uh, lesson P3, what we're going to be focusing on today is uh, solving equations and inequalities. And in order to solve equations and inequalities, we need to uh, recognize a few properties here. Uh, most of these properties we've worked with in the past. Um, once again, you don't need to scramble to write all this down because it's right in your book. You can write them down later if you'd like to have it in your notes. Uh, just a couple of uh, properties regarding equations. Okay? And we have some similar properties regarding inequalities, which we'll look at later. Um, the reflexive property just tells us that uh, if we have the same thing on both sides, okay, that is inequality. Uh, the symmetric property tells us that if we have u on the left and v on the right, that's the same as having v on the right, or left and u on the right, okay, switching the sides doesn't change anything. And also the transitive property, <coughs> if uh, u equals v and v equals u, then it must be true that u equals w, or u v equals w, I should say, then it must be true that u equals w, okay? Now the two probably most important properties for us today are going to be the addition property of equality and the multiplication property of equality because this is what allows us to solve equations. Okay? So ultimately if we have uh, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, any true sentence is what it boils down to. Okay? It's okay for us to add the same thing to both sides of an equation okay? to get some desired result. And as we learned in algebra, when we first started solving equations, okay, the goal of solving equations is to get the variable by itself. Okay? In order to do that, sometimes we have to add something to both sides or we have to subtract something to both sides. Okay? And that's what allows us to do that is this addition property of equality. Similarly, we know that uh, from our previous equation solving that sometimes we have to divide or multiply to get our variable by itself. And what allows us to do that is the multiplication property of equality. Okay. So let's take a look at uh, just a definition here to make sure we're clear because in uh, part of our work today, we're going to be asked to look at an equation and decide if it's linear or not. Okay. So a linear equation in X is one that can be written in the form ax plus b equals zero. Okay. So that's what we're looking for is can we write it in that form? Okay. If we can't put it in that form, okay, then it's not linear. And ultimately, what we're going to be looking for today is they're going to throw us some equations that might have x squared in that. Okay. Does this have an x squared in it anywhere? No. So if you see an x squared, is it linear? No. What if you see sine x in there? not linear. Okay, you don't see anything like that. It just has to have an x variable and the x variable could be multiplied by something and there could be something added. Keep in mind that b could be 0 possibly. If I told you 3x equals 5, would that qualify as something linear? Yeah. Or even 3x equals 0. Okay. That would qualify as linear. Because in both cases we could write 3x minus 5 equals 0 and 3x minus 0 equals 0 we can put them in that general form that we have right here. Okay. So the key element is, is you're looking for a variable that's just x. Okay. Can't have any square roots, can't have any powers, okay. just plain old x. Okay. All right. And the other thing that can't happen is you can't have the a be 0, because if a was 0, what would happen to your x that you just had? It would be gone. a times 0, or 0 times x would be 0. <coughs> there wouldn't even be a variable, so therefore it wouldn't be linear. All right, and as I mentioned, what we're going to be doing today is solving equations. And ultimately what we're after is a value of x that makes the sentence true. And that's all a solution to an equation is, is just the value of x that makes the sentence true. Okay. And ultimately, to solve an equation, find all the values of x for which the equation is true. Okay. In other words, find all the solutions. And our general strategy is going to be to get the variable alone. Okay. Okay. Any questions so far? Alright, well, let's take a look then. At uh, essentially what amounts to step one for dealing with any equation. Okay. And this talks about equivalent equations. An equivalent equation is obtained if one or the more of the following operations are performed. Okay. So the first one is combining like terms. 
Okay, sometimes we're not ready to solve an equation because there's like terms that need to be put together on the same side of an equation. Okay, so in this particular case, you know, we might say, how do you solve this? Well, we don't solve it yet because this is not ready to be solved. Okay, 2x and x need to be put together on the same side of the equation. Okay, now that we have the 2x and the x combined, okay, now we're ready. Okay, now we can go ahead and use our solving process, which we'll talk about in a minute. Okay. But that's the one thing they want to look for before you actually solve. Okay, you first need to simplify. Okay, and one of the steps in simplifying either the left or the right or both is going to be combining any like terms that you see. Okay. All right. Number two here is reducing fractions. Okay, reducing fractions. And if we have any fractions that need to be reduced, like three ninths, for instance. Okay, notice what they did. They rewrote it to one-third. So if you see any fractions that aren't reduced, that would be another job of simplifying that you could do. Okay. And then finally, removing grouping symbols. Another equation that I could write, maybe if I have 4 and then I have 2x minus 3 equals 8, something like that. Okay. Before I'm ready to solve this, I need the grouping symbols out of there. So I would go ahead and distribute. And if possible, combine like terms now. If there had been any like terms in here, we would combine like terms. Okay. So bottom line is when we get done, the left and right hand side, there should be nothing we can do to simplify them. And then we're ready to solve. Fair enough? Okay. Now if, if we were given an equation you know, like that right off the bat, okay, couldn't we just start solving? Sure. Okay. But in some cases, we're not going to be ready. It's not going to be ready to be solved. Okay. So we'll have to do some simplifying first. All right, and then uh, now <clears throat> we'll go ahead and look at the actual solving process together and uh, <clears throat> review what to do when we have certain situations. So in the case of uh, letter A here, we have x plus 3 equals 7. Okay. To get the x alone, okay, we just need to get rid of the plus 3 here. So we learned in algebra that we would add negative 3 to both sides. Or the same thing as that would be subtracting 3. Okay. So if we did that, we'd subtract 3 from both sides. And usually when we do the work, we write down minus 3, minus 3. And depending on how you know complicated or simple the equation is, you may or may not have to actually write that down to figure out that it's just 4. But ultimately, this is what the work would look like if I, choose to, if I chose to show it. And uh, the second one, you notice that we have x's on both sides of the equation. Okay. So if there's x's on both sides of the equation, we need to get those together. So I would suggest going minus 2x and minus 2x to both sides. Okay. And if we did that, that would lead us to the 3x minus, or 3x equals 4 we see over here. Okay. And once the x's are together on the same side, it really doesn't matter whether they're on the right or the left. Okay. Now we're ready to solve. So in this particular case, we would divide by 3. And that's using that multiplication property of equality we just mentioned. And the final answer here would be 4 thirds. And how many times out of 10 should we take our calculator out and divide 4 and 3 and give a decimal answer for this? Yeah, 0 times out of 10. Okay, just leave it as 4 thirds. That's good. Okay. All right. And <coughs> then in these two cases, once again, these two are essentially the same. Okay, it says you got, in this, in this case, in this pretty much the same case we just had up here, I chose to divide by 3. Okay, we can divide by 3. Okay, in either case, you know, it's the same equation. Okay, or we can multiply by 1 third. Because doing what I did up above okay, is no different than multiplying by 1 third. That's how division is defined. It's, it's defined as multiplying by the reciprocal. Okay, so if I multiply both sides by one-third, I get the same result, x equals 4. Or if I divide by 3, I get the same thing. So which of these is better? Okay. They're both the same, so neither is better. They're both equal. Uh, I would suggest, though, that if there was something like 3 quarters x equals 5, for instance, okay, instead of dividing by 3 quarters, okay, it's easier when we have a fraction in front of x to... Uh, I'd go with the uh, letter C here. I'd multiply by the reciprocal. So I'd multiply both sides by four-thirds. That way I'm not worrying about dividing by a fraction. 
All right. Questions on the equation solving process. All right. I'm going to give you 